Today's video is brought to you by Assiniboy Downs Gaming and Event Center. And be sure to tune in to Trust the Profits Live Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern for Monday Night Lights, hosted by Matthew DeSantis. Hi, and welcome to Trust the Profits. I'm Jessica Tugwell, and today I wanted to do a bit of a crash course on basic pedigree analysis and some of the tools that are available out there to help you incorporate pedigree into your handicapping. Now, a lot of my work goes a lot deeper than any everyday handicapper really needs. A lot of what I do is looking into deeper crosses and things that would be more useful for a owner or breeder. But there are some tools I use that I think can be extremely valuable for handicappers, especially when it comes to situations like evaluating first time starters or horses trying something new for the first time. For our example, we're going to look into the pedigree of Woody Stevens winner, Arabian Lion. Now, the first and the most relevant tool that I think every handicapper should have in their back pocket is Equibase's Dam Produce Search. It's a little bit convoluted to get to it. I had actually been using the site for years before I even realized it was an option, but it is an invaluable resource for looking up a mare's foals. So what you have to do is you have to run a blank horse search. So just click without typing in a horse. And then here at the bottom, you can search by year of birth and dam. So in this case, Arabian Lion's Dam is unbound. And now here we have a list of all of her foals in alphabetical order. So we obviously, we know Arabian Lion. So let's take a look at some of the others here. Her first foal born in 2016 was Tizire. And we can see here by looking that she broke her maiden in a maiden claiming race, was a $42,000 yearling, $110,000 two-year-old, and most recently sold in foal to Vino Rosso in 2020 for $70,000. We can go back and just kind of go through and see what we have. Uh, Malibu Star was the second foal from the dam. You can see current workouts. And again, another expensive horse here, just like Arabian Lion was, a $450,000 yearling Malibu Star by Giants Causeway. Got one by Mishawish who actually, uh, this one, she broke her maiden on debut, which is something that is good to note for if you're looking at a horse, for instance, in a maiden race, a first time starter or something, seeing siblings that have won first out is always a good sign. And then the final filly here. So this is a good way. It, sometimes it takes a while if you really wanted to get into something like, okay, we'll have any of them run on turf. Well, you'd have to go and look race by race by looking at the charts and stuff, which is definitely not as easy or convenient as just looking at past performances. But it's free and it's a great option to get a good idea for what a mare has already produced. Another really useful tool if you want to start diving a little bit deeper into pedigrees is pedigreequery.com. There is both a free and uh, paid version of the website, but for handicappers, the free version is absolutely just fine. So we look up Arabian Lion here. And this will give us a full five cross pedigree, meaning five generations of ancestors for Arabian Lion. You see Justify, Unbound, you see Distorted Humor, AP Indy, Private Account, but what you probably might be drawn to is the presence of Personal Ensign here on the bottom of the pedigree. And one of the most useful parts of pedigree query is the ability to look at a horse's progeny going, you know, back in generations. So you can right click personal ensign and then select progeny. And there you have all our foals. So it is worth noting that pedigree query is essentially the Wikipedia of pedigrees. So especially when it comes to race records, I recommend cross referencing things with either Equibase or preferably equineline.com because equineline has worldwide race results, whereas Equibase is usually limited to just North American starts. So a horse, you know, that raced in Japan might show on Equibase as being unraced. But then when you look up on Equine Line, it'll show you the horse's race record, their number of starts, and whether they're a winner or a stakes winner, etc. And one of the fun things, you know, to do, especially once you really kind of get into pedigree, is to sort of trace through these family trees here. So for instance, with personal ensign, you can take my flag, go down to progeny and continue through and see what kind of horses are 
uh, descendant from personal ends in. So for instance, you can get to uh, the nice horse here performer. And then you can also go the other direction, you can go backwards. So let's see personal ends in here, you can then go back to horses such as Tom Rolfe. And you can see then that Pocahontas also produced the stallion chieftain. So then, you know, you go back and you remember, oh, hey, uh, performer, Spitestown has Chieftain right here. And you start to kind of pick up on little patterns and things like that after a while. So it's a really great tool to really, if you want to start digging deep into pedigree, I definitely recommend just spending a lot of time on this website. Now, most ADWs will also have some degree of pedigree information available to you. So for instance, we're looking at today's race one at Belmont Park. You can click on a horse, and then usually you'll be able to click on the sire and dam. So for instance, here with Graham, we're going to click on McLean's music. And we'll look down to see uh, two-year-olds, for instance. Uh, McLean's music two-year-olds win at 18%, which is higher than his three-year-olds or four-year-olds and up. He wins with 16% first-time starters. This horse isn't a first-time starter, but it's good to note for cases where you are looking at a first-time starter. And then you can also go back and click on the dam. We can see here that this dam raced 15 times, won twice, placed three times, earned $80,950. Up here, you see that her first career start was running sixth in a route race. This is her first full and is not a winner. So let's see if we can find a horse in here who might have a more experienced, accomplished dam where we can have some information here. So for instance, this mare has three foals, but none of them have started. So here with Bridgehampton, you can see that she was a stakes winner and earned $173,940, has five foals and four winners in as many starters, including a stakes winner. So then we can look at the fact that the foals from Bridgehampton actually give you a, a positive ROI on your $2 bet, which is kind of interesting. Uh, there's 19 wins and 66 starts. Uh, they went at 30% on dirt, but she does have uh, one winner on the turf, it looks like. Then we go down, we'll see none of them, three of them started at two, but none of them were winners. So that's good to note for this horse, for instance, that maybe this horse might want a little bit more time, perhaps. She does, though, have a winner in four first-time starters, so she does have a foal who won first out, so that's helpful as well, information for us to know. And then you have to, you know, take that into account with the sire of the horse in this case. He has 27% two-year-old winners, and from starts at two, it's 10.4%. He does only get 9.1% winners first out, so that, again, kind of makes you think maybe this horse is going to need a start. But... It's a good pedigree there with being a half to a stakes winner and clearly on the morning line is pretty highly regarded. So that's a very basic bare bones introduction to pedigree analysis and some of the tools that you might find useful with handicapping based on pedigree. Uh, you can use these tools to determine if there's precedent for success with what the horse is trying today in the race you're handicapping. If their sire has produced a lot of turf winners, then maybe this horse wants to try the turf. If their dam has a bunch of first out winners, then maybe there's a good chance that this horse is going to pop first out. My personal rule of thumb is that I never let pedigree talk me off a horse that I like in my handicapping otherwise. But I'm always open to letting pedigree kind of put me onto a horse that I might not have considered originally. Let me know in the comments what kind of pedigree angles you'd like to look for when handicapping. One of my favorites is uh, betting descendants of Spitestown on a sloppy track. I feel like that tends to work out for me more often than not. Uh, but let me know. Maybe you don't think pedigree is relevant at all in your handicapping and you just stick to workouts and trainer stats when it comes to first time starters. So let me know and make sure you check out all the other great content we have around here on Trust the Profits and I will see you next time. Thank you.